Good afternoon, everyone. Allison Scarberg here, Consolidated Planning Group. And also today, I have um, Ms. Anna Kluth with Workforce Solutions, um, the Student Hireability Navigator. So uh, today, we're going to be talking about educational options after high school for special needs families. Um, we're going to um, kind of just get started in, in kind of taking a deep dive in some of these things. And Anna's going to chat with us a little bit about some of the programs that are available through the state of Texas uh, for um, families with students with disabilities. And so she's gonna join in on that today. Um, we're glad you're here. If you're here for the first time, um, Consolidated Planning Group is a holistic special needs financial planning firm. We do a lot of webinars on special needs topics on a pretty regular basis. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. I put that in the chat box, um, a Facebook page, other things. So if there are other events that you might be interested in that might be relevant, um, to you and your journey, you can go um, and kind of listen to some of the past recordings. And the Facebook page will have um, additional events that are scheduled going forward. Today, we're glad you're here. We want to hear um, your questions. Um, so your your microphones and your cameras are muted, so we can't see you and we can't hear you. But if you'll just put your questions in the chat box today, um, Anna, if you'll watch the chat box for me, and um, as we have questions, you can um, you can just bring them up. You can feel free. I want this to be interactive to interrupt me. We don't have to take all the questions uh, at the end. Today's meeting is being recorded. Um, you will get a, an email uh, following the meeting today or tomorrow with the recording and um, also contact information for both um, Anna and myself, how to reach us uh, if you have additional questions. So um, having said that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as some of you may know, if you've participated before in some of our events, um, I wear multiple hats. I mean, don't we all? Uh, we we wear all these hats as as parents and workers and moms and all of these things. But um, when when it comes to to special needs, I understand the journey. I'm a, a mom to four, and I have two kids with special needs. I have um, one that is still a minor. We're at, at that transition pay, phase, and I have one that has already gone through this um, this transition phase. And there's just a lot of um, there's a lot of topics, and there's a lot of big question marks when we're at this at this place. And me knowing what I know and my background. Um, I would say that it's always been a little bit tough. And um, so we really put these webinars out there um, as, as a place to give you some tools and resources so that way you can um, have a broader and better understanding and help navigate some of these challenges um, as, as, you, as you go through. So um, first things first, you know, um, when, when we start talking about higher education or what's next after um, after high school, so whether you go to public school, whether you go to private school, sometimes we have families that are homeschooling, um, you know, all of it is it's, it's kind of on the brain. But I think one of the things that I really I really stress and kind of start with is thinking about and setting realistic expectations. Um, traditional path versus a non-traditional path. What does that look like and what does that mean? And what it might mean for you might not mean the same for somebody else. A, a, a traditional path for someone might mean that a four-year university and then and, and then a master's degree and you know that might be a traditional path and, and, and a, a traditional path for somebody else might be a certificate program, a trade school, um, a skill, or um, any other number of things. So um, I, really, you know, one of the things that we talk about is you are where you are. You're not behind. Your child is where they are. They're not behind. They are where they are. And, um, you know, for, for some of our homeschoolers, other people, it, it's kind of like meeting our children where, where they are, wherever they are in that process. And, and it's okay. I think, you know, we start early on these comparisons. And, and, and I mean, it really starts early. As soon as you have a baby, well, when did he sit up? When did he walk? When did he eat his first food? And I mean, it really, really starts early. And we're, we're always comparing our kids to other kids and um, or looking around. And we look at other moms or other parents posting these fabulous photos on Facebook or some of these other things. And you think, oh, I wish I was there um, or, or things like that. And I think it's, it's just really, really okay. So so there's so many programs out there, transition programs, trade school, community college, um, there, the, yeah, clearly the university degree programs, certificate programs, there's licenses, um, licensing courses. 
Um, one of the things we can think about is a reduced college course load. Um, some things, other things to th consider living at home versus on campus or partnerships with other organizations to live on campus, which we'll talk about that um, today um, in, in this presentation. Some of the other things, and Anna's going to talk a little bit about this today, Texas Workforce Commission's vocational rehab. Um, some, of, some of the past may be what kind of skills can we um, help our student get gain? How do we close the gap on, um, on them being employable as opposed to unemployable? And so, so, so sometimes it might not be any kind of um, more college, you know, courses or anything like that, but maybe it's the, you know, the vocational rehab program and, and helping your child with a disability find basically gainful employment and have the skills that they need uh, to get there. So I, you know, I spend time on this one because, again, I mentioned I was a, I'm a parent, and so I think for me, I I had to like kind of talk myself through some of these things because of of these these realistic versus unrealistic expectations in the the box, and I think it's just okay to say, hey, get out of the boat, what whatever it's crowded in the boat maybe maybe the maybe the boat is bumpy and it's not working so you know backing up turning the knobs and saying hey what works for us what works for this child what works for our family um what works for our budget all of these things are good and it's all kind of a step in the path forward in life and 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 we're not we're not we're just simply not going backwards in this okay so um, six factors students with learning disabilities need to succeed. Um, we basically self-awareness, proactivity, perseverance, goal setting, presence, um, and use of effective social support systems and emotional coping strategies. So these are all things, and these are actually some of the things um, as parents, we're always working on these. Sometimes we have um, therapists, um, psychologists, psychiatrists, other things like that. We're working on some of these things. But these are also some of the things that um, as we're talking and learning more about workforce solutions and um, vocational rehab and things like that, these are some areas uh, that they can work on as well. Okay. <clears throat> so as it as it relates to higher learning um, education post high school, some of the things that it's important for you to know, and this was um, <laughs> this was a hard lesson for me. So as I was going through this with my daughter, which by the way, my my um, my daughter is a senior in college uh, this year, um, and so she'll so she'll graduate in May. But when we were going through this, I was in up to my neck with her. Um, on this. And so first things first, um, there aren't enough guidance counselors in any of the public schools that this could be their full-time job to handle this for all of their students. Okay. So they're get, given a list and go check this out. And here's a list of scholarships, things like that. And here's something you might think about. But um, so clearly partnering with your child in this process, and it's probably more, um, you're probably going to be more of a director than, <laughs> than the partner. They might be the partner with you on some of this. So the bottom line is one of the first things that I learned is that um, none of the schools, none of the deadlines, none of the rules, any, any kind of requirements and things like that are created equally. No office of disability at any university is the same as any other university. So first things first, if you didn't know, um, most all, all universities have some kind of office of disability um, or um, our office working with individuals with a disability. And this is also true for the um, private colleges. It's true for the public colleges. And it's also true um, for the community colleges. So. Um, so if your child is a child that needs accommodations, um, a lot of our children have IEPs or 504s in the public school. They may have a learning plan in a, in a private school. But what, what happens is this does not transfer to the university or to the community college. It's just not an automatic, oh, I have a 504, I have an IEP, it's just going to transfer to the college. It does not. So <clears throat> one of the things that I would recommend is as you're going through this journey and you understand what your child's um, needs and accommodations are, like maybe it's audio books, 
maybe it's voice to text recognition software like Dragon Speak or something like that. Maybe they have processing speed, working memory issues, some of those types of things. Maybe it's a note taker. Maybe it's um, use of an audio recorder. There's so many things that a person may need. Um, but those are some of the common ones that we see over and over again. You're going to want to research the Office of Disability and find out what software do they have, what resources do they have for their students that would be free and no additional cost to you. Because, yes, you can buy Dragon Speak, you can buy all these softwares, and you can do all of this yourself. But a pretty solid Office of Disability has these um, things already in place for no additional charge. Um, so getting accommodations in, um, at the Office of Disability at the university level, it's a process and you want to start earlier, sooner versus later, okay? So you don't start the first week of college classes trying to get your, your accommodations because it could be well into the semester and your child is already working with their hands behind their back because they don't have their accommodations. So typically... Um, the universities and the community college are going to ask for updated testing. We're talking about learning disability testing. We're talking about neuropsych testing. Usually they're going to ask for this to be updated in the last three to five years. And this is the part where I'm telling you every school is different. Okay. Um, what we have seen is that they have been a little bit more relaxed on this since COVID because it has been more difficult to get the neuropsych testing as far as appointments and things like that. So they have been more flexible with this. You still have to have proof of disability, um, you know, and what, what the recommendations and accommodations are. So one thing, a couple of things that I will say, um, and Anna will talk about this too, and I, I, I never say that, you know, VR will do this or they won't do this, but the vocational rehab program has a lot of services that they provide and, um, and assessments that they do for your child to ascertain what are their needs, what are their deficits and, and that would cause an impediment to employment. So while neuropsych testing is pretty expensive and just because you're working with VR doesn't mean that they're going to do neuropsych testing, it's possible, uh, or learning disabilities or what the deficits are, um, that is a way that this testing might be able to be done um, if VR is in your cards. Um, typically, your public school is not going to do this testing for you. Typically, doing this testing on the outside, it literally could take you three to six months to get on the schedule because, um, as, as you guys have, may have noticed with, the, with COVID, um, the mental health professionals are super busy. Um, so, so plan early, get it on the schedule, and, and neuropsych testing could literally cost you anywhere between, I would say, $25 to $3,500, and is typically not covered um, by your insurance unless it's warranted because of the diagnosis and there are issues with the child as a result of the diagnosis, then sometimes that might be covered. Um, okay, so on SAT and ACT, um, AP exams, college courses, graduate level exams. Um, SAT is the college board. ACT has their own website. They're not the same, different testing for college entrance. Again, the rules have changed a little bit. So um, some schools have relaxed on the SAT and the ACT because a lot of the testing dates and things have changed as a result of COVID. Um, but be aware and look at these schools to see what the scores are. They have minimum score requirements to be able to um, to, to go into their programs and things like that. So you may want to look at that. But as it relates to accommodations for these kids, for the SAT and the ACT, again, plan early. SAT, if you go to the College Board website and you type in, in their little search bar, accommodations for people with disabilities, up is going to come a page. There's going to be a form that you can download. Um, you're going to need to get that form filled out by a physician and have it signed and, and basically send the proof of the disability to the college board. Um, and then I actually had them be fast with it last year, which they're typically not fast. It's typically, it could be a couple of months before you get an approval. I actually had an approval in a couple of weeks um, last year. So that was, that was favorable. So get that in early ACT, same thing. You go to their website, type in about uh, disabilities and you can find their forms as well. Um, so what I'll say about the SAT and ACT, because I hear a lot of families, you know, kind of stressing about this and, you know, you don't have any idea where we are. We're not even remotely thinking about the SAT or the ACT. Um, or maybe your child doesn't test well. Maybe they have like severe anxiety about testing um, and this is just not going to go well. 
Um, so if you're entering in um, through the community college, don't stress them. It's not necessary. They don't have to take the SAT and the ACT. Uh, there is a TSI, the Texas Success Initiative. You can Google that TSI. And um, there are all kinds of training programs, both both free and that you pay for, to be able to pass the, the Texas Readiness Test, basically saying that you can take four credit classes in the state of Texas, either at the community college or at any any. Um, Texas University. So if they pass that TSI and they go to the community college first, even if they take just one class, they can later transfer to a university and the SAT and the ACT is not necessary. Last thing up um, on the testing, if you have testing that's older than five years old, um, before you jump out and spend $3,500 on neuropsych testing, um, call the school that you guys are thinking about and ask them if you have a letter um, from the doctor with your old testing and the letter from the doctor indicates that the disability is the same, the recommendations are the same and that they followed them for this period of time, will they accept that? Um, because last year I actually did see a lot of schools that were willing to take old testing if there was a corresponding letter from the doctor. It could be the psychologist, the psychiatrist, whatever doctor has kind of made these recommendations, they may, they may take that. So reasonable accommodations um, at work if it doesn't pose undue hardship, it's a real thing. You can um, look at the Department of Labor. There's the uh, Job Accommodation Network. And then um, the job coaches and workforce solutions, um, vo vocational rehab, they spend a lot of time um, kind of talking about these things and um, disclosing a disability, how to disclose that, how to kind of work through some of the challenges in the workplace. There is so much help out there um, for our kids uh, with disabilities. Um, and part of it, part of the full-time job is just navigating what the help is out there. So Anna, I'm going to turn it to you. Do we have questions? There, um, well, there's a couple of comments. So we have one that says uh, Blue Bonnet Trails does free testing. Um, I don't know if you've, have you heard of that, Allison? So the local intellectual disability authority, LIDA, LIDA, however you call it, okay? So um, every county has a local authority for intellectual disabilities. So, um, and, and we typically have people from all across the state on, so I don't know what counties, like for instance, Harris County, um, is the Harris Center. So Blue Bonnet is that particular county center. Um, Harris, Harris Center used to be MHMRA, and that is something that people commonly refer to the Harris Center as. Uh, Fort Bend County is Texana, and it's true that some of these places do. Um, it depends on the level of need and it and the, and the exact type of testing. So a lot of these places do do the testing, but um, as far as accommodations and the recommendations there. Um, you'll, you'll have to check with them on that. So if you are registered, this is where you've called these local authorities. Maybe you have your child on the um, waiver interest list, um, you know, like HCS class, Texas Home Living, et cetera. Um, you register through your local, um, your local authority for that. So you definitely can um, call and check with them on that. There are, there are different ways to go about getting testing. Um, most of the... A lot of the quickest ways is private pay, but again, it's really expensive. And so, like I said, if you have old testing, see if you can get a letter from the doctor, if they'll take it. But the biggest thing I'm telling you is just don't wait because I'm just telling you the mental health people that do this testing are really slammed. Um, they're, they're just really, really slammed. So plan early, find out what, you know, where you can get these resources. And uh, we had another comment that kind of goes along with that um, being prepared. So it says request accommodation for SAT early. If doing at school need time to get instructions and material to high school and school to get proctors to administer. So just that preparing and planning ahead. Yes, that that is good advice. And um, um, when I experienced, I, I said my, my other daughter's a senior in college. So when we were doing the SAT and ACT, it was several years ago. But when we went through that, um, whoever gave that information is so true. It was so, 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 so slow. Um, it, it, and, it, and it wasn't like that, like I said, last year with my other, my other child. 
but it was ridiculously slow. Um, so be mindful of that. Also, um, for kids with anxiety and other issues, uh, ADHD and things like that, they can do testing in a, in a, in a small area. So like she was talking about a proctor, um, it might be one-on-one, it might be in a, you know, in a smaller area, you might be able to do testing over a couple of days as opposed to one day. There, there, there are several things like that, that can, that can be helpful. Um, any other questions? Nope, not at this time. Just this. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. So post high school options for special needs um, day and transition programs. Um, there are, you know, there's a lot of programs. Um, we don't work for these programs and they don't work for us. Um, there's a lot of programs. We actually do have a PDF um, of, of post high school options for special needs kind of day and transition. So this is just um, just a few. We've got Bloom Consulting and Humble. Humble. I better not say that wrong. <laughs> Um, uh, Brookwood community, we've heard of Brookwood, um, and, and Brookshire and they, um, you know, a lot of these places I've toured and I've seen myself, um, and what I would say is start touring, start looking at this, um, Marbridge, Next Step Transition in Deer Park, Reach Unlimited, Summer House, The Hub, um, Monarch School and Institute. A lot of the people that run The Hub were formerly at Monarch. Um, So there's a lot of um, Monarch is great. The hub is great. I mean, basically all what I'm saying here is all of these things are great. Um, And some of them. um, So, so maybe when we're talking about like that, that non-traditional path, so maybe your child needs a transition. Maybe there's a bridge, maybe, you know, maybe there's a transition program in the high school and then maybe you need another transition program after you finish finish the transition program, that's okay. There's a lot of young, young adult transition programs that are really, really good out there. The waiting list can be long um, and COVID made it more difficult. So start looking at these. A lot of them um, moved to a virtual tour. Um, it used to be some of them re- required a um, face-to-face tour, but a lot of them have moved to um, a virtual tour now- nowadays, but it doesn't hurt to get yourself on these lists. Um, you know, look at them from a perspective from affordability, look at them from a perspective of, um, you know, um, transportation and those types of things of getting um, to and from the program and those types of things. Um, but once you're on these lists, when they have a spot that fits your, your, your loved one, then they're going to call you and you certainly reserve the right um, to say no. And so I, I say, what does it hurt? So what does it hurt? Maybe it's a couple of days a week. Maybe you're thinking about a class, one or two classes at the community college, but what are they going to do with the rest of their time? Um, maybe you, you're you planning on going full time at the community college, but maybe um, initially it's a little bit too much and maybe you have to back up and punt. Um, so putting yourself on this list, if something, you know, if something goes awry or we have any issues, maybe we have a child that has um, a compromised immune system and with COVID the way that it's going, we got to back up and punt. Whatever it might be, um, just give yourself some options. And so that way, um, you know, that you can pivot in the, in the event of crisis or in the event of things are not as going as perfectly as everything looks on Facebook, um, <laughs> you, you can, you can kind of move in a different direction, but all of these are good and, and definitely, um, ch- check them out. Okay. Educational options post high school. So this is just a list. It's not an all inclusive um, list. Um, we always say, um, go to that website, thinkcollege.org. You can put that in the chat box, thinkcollege.org, uh, and they have a lot of information on um, higher education for students with disabilities. Um, but these are some of the, the programs that we know that are in and around the state of Texas. For the, There might be a couple of them that are not in Texas, like, for instance, Lynn University, the Metamorphosis program is actually in Florida. Um, but there are are some really, really good programs all across um, all across the U.S., but including uh, the state of Texas, uh, that are they're simply um, designed for um, neurodiverse kids, kids that learn a little bit differently, and they have had a lot of success. So once again. None of the colleges are created equally when their program opens up is not the same date as all the other programs, how many students they take for each of these programs. Some of the students, some of the, um, the, the programs, you know, like 
might take six new students. Okay. So it's not like, okay, well we take 200. Um, so you want to be aware early of what these programs are, how many they take, what do you have to take to get in? Um, we actually do have a webinar that, um, we did a couple of months ago and it's on our YouTube channel, um, uh, where we had some of these different programs. Um, they were, so we had like, I don't know, eight or 10 different colleges maybe um they basically came in and said here's who we are who here's who we serve this is what they get this is how long the program is um and so they would say whether or not it was a degree program or whether it was a certificate program like some were tied towards food service some were tied towards um I don't know the like the um, what is that industry like the hotels and things like that like the the hospitality in- industry that kind of thing, um, all all kinds of different ones. But we've also heard from other places like um, you know we we hear um, some of the community colleges that work um, pretty uh, pretty good with um, kids with disability. We always hear about um, Lone Lone Star um, is is one that we hear a, a lot about. Some of them don't necessarily have specific programs for kids with disabilities, but they have an awesome um, uh, disability services office. So, um, so check these out. They all have websites. They all have, um, you know, different, you know, some of them have videos and things like that. Um, and just, you know, some of them are going to be more towards autism and some of them, um, are, you know, lower level, lower level functioning. And then some are going to be tied um, towards higher level functioning. Um, there's one, I wanted to see if it was on here, Texas state tech. Yeah, there's a Texas state tech and this is in Fort Bend County. Uh, I, I, I guess it's Richmond or Rosenberg. Um, and so they're not like a special needs college or anything. They have a lot of um, degree programs that are like engineer brain Um So for our, um, you know, our autistic engineer brains out there, um, they, they have, it's been said over and over that they're really, really working well with, um, with kids with disabilities. So just don't be afraid to, to look outside of the box. Um, if some of these other programs aren't an exact fit, I know for me and for my kids, um, we never fit quite in one particular box. We weren't, you know, we weren't low functioning, but we weren't, you know, we, we definitely had some, some deficits, you know, so, but it was like, there was always never that perfect, perfect fit. So if you're there, I def, I totally get you. Um, okay. Let's see. We got a, a, a question. We do. Um, from Miss Albert, are these schools allowing online learning instead of a hundred percent in person so they can live at home? Uh, most of the schools are allowing online learning. Like, like one thing, um, um, my kids did some um, dual credit with the Houston Community College, and and like some schools do things differently. Like with HCC, and I, I I'm sure they've changed this with COVID. But prior to COVID, you actually had to take a test to see if you could do online learning. Like, because some students brains aren't wired that way or they would fail miser- miserably in online learning. And so as long as you pass the test of being able to do online learning, then they definitely um, would move forward with that. But most of these programs um, are um, are available online and a lot of them, they weren't available online until COVID hit and then they had to, they had to back up and regroup on, on some of those as well. Okay. That's- All right. CLE, um, College Living Experience. So um, this is an option. We've had a webinar on this before. Um, College Living Experience is an awesome, it's an awesome program that kind of walks beside and walks with your student. Um, so, so basically they, they have the college living experience has, has locations all across the United States, but their location here um, is in Brenham. And, um, so, so the community college there and, um, and A&M and what have you. Um, so this is something separate that you pay for separately from the high school. I mean, from the college, um, but they live there. Uh, they're learning life skills, independent living skills, social development, um, academics and career development. They're really learning a lot there. They really pour a lot into them. So, um, from a from a price perspective, it can be pretty pretty expensive for some, um, but it may be an option for you. And 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 it's a it's a good way 
to um, have your student move towards that independence. Um, I don't know about you, but we get our teenagers and I don't know, I think they get sick of us at this age or something. They don't really want to hear what we have to say anymore. We're not as smart as they used to think we were when, when they were four, (laughs) but, um, but kind of letting go and kind of letting them move in that independence realm and, 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 you know, learning some skills and kind of being accountable to others. So there's some information on the college living experience. You can check out their website and they're a pretty awesome organization. So wanted to share that with you. Um, Also um, bloom consulting and the campus connections bloom consulting. So just write this down, go to their website and check them out. They got a lot going on. Um, they, um, and they really, really, really do a great job. Um, so Bloom Consulting is some, is, um, an organization that actually Texas Workforce Solutions and uh, Vocational Rehab sometimes contract with Bloom Consulting. So sometimes you could actually get Bloom services through those programs. Um, but they have all these programs out there that you can private pay. You can kind of go through, um, they do, uh, assessments to, to, to see, you know, what it's going to take for your child to be successful in the workforce, at college, kind of on another level, they, they have a lot of different um, ways of working working with your student. But one of the programs that they have is a Campus Connections program, and it's basically a wraparound um, program, and they're really partnering with your student, and they have um, kind of a connection coach that does the mentoring and the guidance and things like that. Um, again, it's not taking you completely out of the equation, but it's having somebody else. Um, somebody else is the coach and it's the, it's the training. It's taking them to the next level and help them, helping them navigate tough um, waters. Um, and it, it just really helps them grow and to, to be able to do what they need to do and kind of solve problems more effectively instead of mom um, swooning in and kind of handling things. Um, the cost for this particular campus connection program is a thousand dollars a month. And they do have a partnership directly um, with uh, Sam Houston State University, but they have all kinds of programs um, that may be a fit. So not just this one, um, like I said, just check out um, check out their website and check out what they have going on. They're really, really doing a great job. And we did um, have one okay. comment. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Spectrum LLC is free LLC for autistic students at Texas A&M. You pay the same cost as the cost of the dorm. And, um, spectrum spectrum LLC okay I, so that that's a living um, a living basically a living quarters with with support at a and m and I actually think I have heard of that one I'm going to look that one up um, there's one that there's not very many slots for um, so and I don't know if it's that one but that was kind of going back to the kind of check check some of these things early I would say anything that is free that the slots probably fill up pretty quick pretty pretty fast on that one but thank you for sharing that I am definitely going to check that one out and then you got the res um the res life at at, um Tammy for that okay Mm -hmm. and then just to kind of piggyback on that too for the bloom consulting um in regards to some of their trainings and um, classes that, um, you know, are kind of rare, you don't see that often, is they have a really great sex education class um, where they separate, they have a female class and a male class, um, just to kind of go over what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and who to talk to if anything happens or different feelings that come up. Um, So I always like to promote that one for them as well. Yes, um, I just, um, I've had, professional and personal interaction with them and they're they're, they're just good they're, yeah. they're they're good we really like them um okay so anna i am going to turn this over to you we kind of been hitting on this workforce solutions and um texas workforce commission and vr so i'm gonna let you talk a little bit about that Okay, thank you. Um, and happy to be a part of this conversation. Um, so my name is Anna Kluth. I am a student hireability with Workforce Solutions. Um, and we are um, a workforce board. There's 28 workforce boards in Texas. Um, we are the largest. It's the Gulf Coast uh, Workforce Board. We cover 13 counties. So we 
from all the way up to Huntsville to El Campo to Baytown and kind of everything in between. Um, our main goal is to help find a job, keep a job and get a better job. And to do that, we understand there's training and um, certification programs that might need to happen before you can get that job. And so at Workforce Solutions, we have different opportunities. We have scholarships, we can help with uh, FAFSA applications. Um, and then we have kind of more soft skills, learning how to write a resume, um, also labor market information, what's going to be um, a good industry or career to get into once you do graduate high school and then um, you know talking to one of our employer employee counselors at our offices um, about how to get those um, what steps to follow in order to to attain that um, career path um, and we do have 28 offices um, on here you can click on this link um, and we can share that I also I put in our website address in the chat um, but we have 28 offices, so you, there's always one near you. Um, and if you ever need help finding a career office, um, I'd be happy to help you. Um, and we're just all about how do you, what careers are out there um, and just trying to spread awareness on careers that some people don't think of that are lucrative. You know, there's a lot of welding, plumbing, um, those type of skills that are needed um, and that will be kind of forever uh, a good way to support yourself in a career path. Um, there's also different uh, different online courses that we support too, especially since COVID. There's Coursera where you can take different courses to get into technology or um, audiovisual, kind of just all of the different industries um, to get certific certifications for free also. Um, and really that's it. Can I, can I, can I ask you something? Um, and I and by the way, guys, we do have a whole video on Texas Workforce Solutions and um, um, Texas Workforce Commission. You know, Anna, sometimes as parents and we're like dissecting all of this information, we're a little confused on Workforce Solutions versus Workforce Commission and like who does what. And um, and so, could you tell us about that? And then also. One thing that I learned, um, because I have kids in these programs, my, both of my, my, my kids are in these programs, um, the cool thing is, is there is a ton of funding, okay? There is a ton of funding for these programs, and they, you know, they, they, they need to spend these funding dollars, so they continue to get these funding dollars. So can you talk about that as well? Sure. Sure. Um... And so first, so I am under Workforce Solutions, the Workforce Board, um, and Texas Workforce Solutions is straight out the, their state. So they, um, and that's Texas Workforce Solutions Vocational Rehabilitation. So we work together a lot. All of our offices are combining. So all of our career offices, VR is moving into. So it should just be a one-stop um, shop kind of deal where if, maybe somebody's coming in looking at Workforce Solutions, but they could get services under VR. Maybe it's you're going in um, to try and get VR services, but you're not eligible. And then Workforce Solutions is there to help support um, and fill in those gaps as well. Um, and so my role is to help support and provide uh, outreach for pre-employment transition services, which is um, on this page right here. And this is specific to students between the ages of 14 and 22. Um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with the process and application process to get VR services. Um, I know it's, it's a big application. They can take up to 90 days, I believe, to look through all the criteria and eligibility. These pre-employment transition services, it's just a one-page application. You have to have um, be within the age range, be in a school setting, and also have a documented disability. Um, this is open to a wider variety of ability levels. So anybody under 504 that um, typically you might not think that you could get services, you can get these. And these kind of go into preparing for that job and that might include college and it might not. It might include a university, um, it might not. And so we try and get to that younger age group, um, 14 and 15 year olds for that career exploration, letting them know what uh, what steps they would need to take if they want to be you know I don't know a pharmacist um, or 
if they do want to go into welding, what does that look like? And just start learning about what their preferences are, what their abilities are, and trying to kind of help them, uh, guide them in the direction of uh, successful um, graduation at high school. And then work-based learning, they have different vocational adjustment trainings, and these would be classes to go over some of the soft skills um, and money management. What do you do with your paycheck? Um, just the basics that everybody needs to know, how to communicate with coworkers, how to communicate with your boss, getting ready for work, what's appropriate to wear, what's not appropriate. Um, there's a lot of different um, classes. And so this is if you have a student that's already in college and is under the age of 22, they would still be eligible for these services as well. Um, we do have paid internships too, it's called paid work experience. And that is where there's um, internships for up to 12 weeks and max of 20 hours a week. And they help find the work site for you. Um, there's a summer earn and learn, which is uh, still, a, it's a work in progress, but that is a five week internship uh, for up to 20 hours a week. Um, so there's different opportunities there. Uh, we do the self-advocacy training too, or they uh, we have providers that do that. Um, and that's just learning about kind of going back to like setting goals and uh, those, those six uh, basics, the six steps that you were talking about at the beginning. I'm sorry, Allison, I forgot what they're called. Um, but just setting goals for yourself, knowing, um, you know, just really looking at the future, engaging what that looks like when you're going into college or to work, knowing if you need to disclose your disability or if you don't need to disclose it, if you need to ask for an accommodation, you know, the best way to do that. Um, and then we have post-secondary education counseling is the other category. Um, and that is just what it says. So it's learning where the Office of Disability is. Um, just knowing if it's if you're going to college or if you're going to a certificate program, how to get prepared for that. Um, this does not include any kind of financial aid that you would have to apply for that uh, full VR services, but everything listed on this slide, um, those are all offered under pre-employment transition services. And you can definitely contact me if you need to get a hold of your counselor. Um, if you are have a student in a high school, you definitely should get in these services. Um, there is a self-referral online process now. It's very new. I can get that information to you, Allison, though. Um, and so sometimes that might be easier so you don't have to go through the school counselor or kind of go through those few steps. You just get a direct um, referral form that goes to the correct office. I, I, that, I think that's the, the path that I went. And so um, someone said in the chat box that, um, you know, there are counselors at the various high schools um, and that is true. And she said it's hit and miss, and that has been true historically as well. So um, if what I would say is if you've had a bad experience in the past, um, move forward like move, move beyond that because they were aware that there were some true issues, you know, um, with, you know, follow through or follow up, um, high turnover, some of the other things. Uh, and they have put like community liaisons in place as well, um, all across the state, um, that to, to help, um, close the gap on some of that. And so if you have had a problem, Maybe your counselor closed your file. Maybe you, there was never follow up or follow through or things like that. Um, um, you can reach out and we can put you in touch with the right people um, because it is their goal to be closing the gap on those things. And I think, you know, not, you know, I think everybody's sick and tired of people blaming COVID for not being good. Um, Cause I, I kind of joked and thought, Oh wait, there's, there's some places that I recall were bad before COVID. <laughs> so anyway, we're, we, we kind of laugh about that, but really COVID did um, throw them for a, for a loop because obviously a lot of employers, closed, jobs ended, there wasn't what wasn't as much work, you know, and then and services needed to be online. So there I, I think a lot of people were definitely scrambling um when the whole world shut down. Um so I think that that was a um a thing. But they they are aware and they are working um working towards that. And um over you know this last year I personally have had you know a pretty good experience with with two different kids and um and kind of moving through that. So um one thing that I will say is that the paperwork um can be 
you should prepare yourself because of the things that you, that you need to provide and showing and the things like, so some of the hang up, what I've seen, um, some of the hang up is, is you, is the family, because we need this proof of this document. We need this signed by a doctor. We need this. I mean, there's, there's several documents and a lot of them we already have, we have them saved on our, our computer and it's easy and we can just upload them or whatever. Um, but some of them, some others, it may be more challenging if computers are an issue for you or if you know, whatever, um, you know, there, there can be some, um, some issues there with getting that paperwork, but not getting the, the required documentation. And even if it's like missing one or two things could really, um, really hold up the decision making process. Do we have some questions? Yes, looks like. Um, okay, Texas Workforce Commission vocational rehab. Um, Somebody was asking, I think they oh, were asking BR. about the- I wasn't pronouncing it correctly. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you're answering. Yeah. Uh, so VRC assigned to high school are available, but are hit or miss. And that is true, like Allison just said. And also just to give you an idea, there are VRCs, which are vocational rehabilitation counselors. And then there are also TVRCs, which are transition vocational rehabilitation counselor. And those TVRCs only work with high school age students or 22 and younger. Um, and so usually sometimes those counselors are a little bit more available because that is their whole caseload or high schools. Um, if you have a VRC, it can be a little tougher to get a hold of because they have a full adult caseload as well. Um, not to say don't keep trying and that's kind of where I can come in and assist because I can help support them with any kind of communication or if knowing if you're looking for a specific type of training, like say by like Bloom or one of their other providers, I usually have that type of information too, um, which is really good if you can have, you know, the most information before you even speak to the counselor, it's just going to make things a lot quicker. Um, but I definitely, it is hit or miss. Um, there's just no way around that, I think. just And, you know, I, yeah, I, I think, you know, when it comes to, you know, um, a lot of things, as far as the turnover of, uh, of folks, we've, you know, we've worked um, with some good ones, but here's what I'll say. Um, unless like from, from my perspective as a mom, my kids need these skills. Okay. So it was valuable to me. We did a vocational evaluation, for instance, um, to find out what those deficits might be in the workplace. Um, so if you have processing speed delays or working memory issues, or if you have a kid with emotional issues, they might blow up at people. Maybe they have anger issues or other things like that. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons our kids can get fired. <laughs> and, and sometimes we don't have to try that hard, right? So like closing the gap on some of these things um, and some of these programs, like the training programs and, and um, just the assistant. And, and I want to say this. Don't forget, age 14, 14 to 22. So if we already know that our kids have a disability or they have some deficits and that we need to work on these, maybe we're slower. I use the term late to the party on some things. We get there. We get there and we're all dressed and ready to go. But sometimes we're a little late and it's okay. Um, but some of these skills are just very valuable. Maybe your child is 14 and maybe it is your hope by 18 that he, that he or she would be employable, but, but these programs can really help. So, um, so do be patient and, and you're not alone and we, and, and they've heard, and that's why they've got these, these, you know, these liaisons and these community people. And I, I would say that things have improved, um, since, since that time, but, um, definitely if you've had a hard time or if you run into some brick walls with this, we understand for sure. Right Thank now, you, Anna, for, just, for sharing one, this. One more thing, just, uh, Especially, I would take advantage right now of the different virtual classes out there because, you know, I don't know where everybody lives on, on this call, but, you know, a lot of areas within our Gulf Coast uh, board are, are rural or they might not have providers near them, um, but now you can get the same training, um, you know, where there are more providers in those areas. So definitely um, email me if you'd like to know about any of those classes or need help getting a hold of your VR counselor. Um, I'm here for you. And to me, this is like, so, you know, I hear people talk about, you know, like another arrow in your quiver. And so, you know, whatever, whatever it is. So, so it's just another, another point. 
another another pivot point. So maybe we're planning on going to the university. Maybe the university didn't work out, or maybe the uh, the maybe the community college didn't work out. So then we have the transition um, programs and the waiting list, and we're on those waiting lists, and that's another you know arrow in our quiver. And we're we're getting some job training. So in case any of those other things work out or later. Um, that job training comes in, in into effect. But I think, you know, from a transition program, what we really try um, to avoid, and, and we've seen more of this with COVID, is is that they leave the public school or their, their normal routine, their school setting, and they literally come home and they do nothing. They, you know, they're they're not going to work. They're not going to school. They're they're playing Fortnite or whatever the video <laughs> games are or whatever. Um, you know, um, so that way that there's some different um, different variety, and then you've got some different options here as well. Okay, so what about funding? And we're going to kind of power through this. And again, um, today we will actually put out a PDF of this um, of this particular presentation because there's a whole bunch of links in here for some different scholarships. Um, so when it comes to college, what about funding? Money matters. It costs money. Um, the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. Uh, it's available each year on, on October 1st. And even if you have a child in college, you need to redo your FAFSA every year, October 1st. Um, Anna said that there is some help with completing the FAFSA. Um, this is not something that your student can do. There's some real personal financial information that is necessary to complete the FAFSA that will be linked to your tax returns, things like that. So again, this is there's some things that we want to tell our older kids, hey, handle that. Um, but this is not one of those things. So if you're, you know, you know, planning, put it on your calendar to get your FAFSA done. The sooner versus later, um, you know, the sooner the people get their FAFSA into the schools that they want, you know, they only have so much financial aid, you might get more um, earlier. Um, there's all kinds of scholarships out there, community-based, school-based, disability, disease-based, sport, music, band. There's so many um, out there, but research early and know your deadlines. So, so moms and dads, I say you get a spreadsheet and you got to help your kid with this because it was massive. The, the different application dates that they open up their scholarships when they're due by, if they require an essay or they don't require an essay. So if you're going into the senior year this year, um, so a couple of things that I would say, um, is get going on your essays. If you didn't already over the summer, get all of your essays done. If you're you know, planning on going to the university or planning to apply for some scholarships, get some variations of your essays done. So that way that's easy as they're kind of going through their senior year and they can kind of upload these. Of course, there's um, as far as um, as far as funding is um, concerned, there's 529's college savings plans. An ABLE account can also pay for higher education, transition programs, uh, tutoring, other things like that. And again, uh, vocational rehab um, may provide support if it's in line with the goals established within the plan for the individual to find competitive employment. So, um, so it's not saying, okay, call VR because they're going to pay for college for your kid. Um, but there are, there are, um, times where there are college services and other things that could be a part of that plan. So, um, it's worth it to check it out. Okay. So as far as scholarships, one of the ones that I, um, always, um, I, I want to remind of, and some people know about this and some people don't, but there is a state um, college tuition waiver for children that were adopted um, through the DFPS system or have been a part of the Texas foster care system in the past. So basically, if that's you, you've adopted one of these children, they've been in the state foster care, your, your kids can go to school for free in the state of Texas, so you should know that. Um, so um, sometimes they mention that during the adoption process or foster care, and sometimes they don't, but that's um, it's a big deal, okay? Um, ask for a, a list of um, scholarships from the child life specialist at your specialty clinic. For instance, Texas Children's ba Baylor College of Medicine has a transition program. They typically have child Child life specialists. Um, they have, um, you know, scholarships that might be, you know, privately funded. They um, know of other disease specific scholarships and things like that, but some of them can be good. Um, so this next one um, is one that I love and I think it's an awesome scholarship. So if you have kids that are younger, 
um, and kind of they're starting their, their high school journey. The Terry Foundation Scholarship is it's based out of Houston, but it's the largest private scholarship provider in the state of Texas. Um, and it really helps outstanding students um, that graduate from high school. Um, and it's with 13 public universities. So this is based off of grades, testing, need, merit, and volunteering. Okay, so they have a big, um, you know, a big push towards volunteering. So this is um, actually one that my child got, and it is phenomenal scholarship. It literally paid for everything, everything. Oh, wow. I, we have like zero, zero out of pocket for for her education. Um, she, um, so we we knew from an academic perspective, her grades were good, but but not good enough to get those academic scholarships. She wasn't athletic. She didn't play in the band. So it's like, well, we're not getting those, those, those are those. And so we thought about this early and we got her volunteering. And by the time she graduated high school, she had like 900 service hours. Okay. And so she really, her test scores were just okay. Her grades were okay to good. I mean, not they, you know, they weren't like a 4.0 or anything like that. They were okay to good. Her test scores were just okay, but she had a story. She had a disability. She rose above it. She gave back in her community and she was a, a, a go-getter. She was a rise above and your kids have stories too. And so check this um, scholarship out. It's really, really amazing. Um, and it's definitely worth looking at. So again, we're going to send these to you, the scholarship. Um, here are some scholarship searches. What I would say is don't spend your time on these ones that are going to give you $250 or $500. And I'm not like being ungrateful, but listen, some of these $250 scholarships, their applications are just as ridiculous as the $50,000 scholarships. So choose wisely. I, I mean, me, I think my minimum was like 2,500 uh, that, that I wanted to, you know, cause 500 here and 500 there, I'm going to buy one book and another book and things like that. So, so we, so because as parents, we only have so much hours in the day and this is a job for you and your student, and you're going to have to help them navigate this because all of their deadlines are different and things like that, but start early. So, um, what I would say is, um, just so you know, if you have a senior in high school that's actually graduating and, and getting out of high school this year, a lot of these scholarships, so it's August right now, a lot of these scholarships, you think you've got plenty of time because it's going to be next year before they go to college. A lot of these scholarship applications are due by December. And then a couple of the other ones will start open in February and they'll close in April. So you think you have all this time and you think that you're going to do this um, over Christmas break and some of them close December 1st. So check it out. Check it out early. Make your spreadsheet and don't be late to the party. Okay. So um, there, here's just some various different disease specific scholarships. Again, you're going to get a PDF of this and then you can kind of just navigate that. Um, but basically... There are scholarships for everything. There's scholarships for kids that have um, um, siblings with a disability, siblings with autism, siblings with Down syndrome, all kinds of scholarships for, for all of the different um, disease um, specific, trike kids, G-tube kids. There's just so many. Um, if you can make it up, there's probably a scholarship for it. Um, so check them out. And so we'll just kind of scroll through that. Um, and like I said, you'll, you guys will get the PDF and you guys can click on this. Um, as always, we, um, we do a ton of webinars on a regular basis. And I, I see some familiar names out there. So thanks for joining us again. We're, um, we're, uh, we uh, value the fact that you've taken time out of your day to be with us today. Um, it, basically, anything on the screen, these are things that should be on your radar. If you're in kind of a transition mode and you're kind of thinking about these things, these are some things that should definitely be on your, your radar. Um, we are um, nationally certified as Social Security advisors. So if you've got questions on Social Security, some families need a Social Security analysis. Those are things that we can help you with. Um, a lot of families need a comprehensive special needs care plan. Basically, what happens to, um, to my child when I'm gone if they can't take care of themselves? These are all things that we can help you with and help determine um, kind of the cost of the future and special needs care and things like that. So if any of these things are, um, are on your list and you haven't heard about them, you can um, check out our, um, our YouTube channel. We put it in the chat boxes up here as well. Um, and then if you like and follow our Facebook page, um, you'll also see additional events and um, speakers that we've got coming up. Um, sometimes on the speaker, 
Oftentimes, we partner with other organizations, other attorneys, other things like that um, to bring to you the information that you need to make your journey a little bit lighter. So, um, Anna, having said that, I've got one o'clock. Um, if we have any other questions, I'll um, answer them and then we'll um, aim to end right on time. Um, no, no more questions. Okay, okay. perfect. Well, Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us today. And thank you again, Anna, um, for all of the services that you and your team provide. And um, if you guys have any dis uh, additional questions or you um, want to talk about your unique situation, um, certainly feel free to reach out uh, to us. We're happy to help any way that we can. One more so, question. Thanks. Just said oh, yes. where, where do we get the slides? But they're going to be emailed out after this, correct? Yes, um, either today or tomorrow, we'll, um, we will email the, the, the slides, a link um, with Anna's contact information. Anna, if you want to shoot over a flyer to myself and Meredith sure. um, of the, the contact information or, um, you know, where they find the community liaisons, if they've had a problem with connecting with people in the past, um, we can attach that to the email as well. And also, um, again, how to reach us and if you want to schedule an individual uh, appointment will also be out there as well. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great afternoon and we'll catch up with you again soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.